everybody, and welcome back to episode number 28 of the Whitlings Prototype. When we last left off, I had to leave a little bit suddenly. I apologize for that. But the lady had come over, and your love always takes priority. That is something I have learned. So, when we left off, we had discovered that our zooming was jumping. <clears throat> And I think we decided to make a an easer for our zoom. Ooh, that worries me just a little bit. Hopefully, this uh, this easer will fix that. So here's our zoom easer. Here's our duration. And I think we were just getting ready to do the on update ease and on end ease of our zoomer. <clears throat> so, actually, this might be a good time to go to the drawing board. Because this ease is slightly different from ones that we've done before. Wait a minute. Well, I guess the main part of this ease, or the main difference, is before we've been easing vector threes and quaternions. And those come with their own lerp function. Although, you know what? I bet that there's a float lerp inside of math f. I thought we were going to have to do it ourselves. Hey, there we go, lerp. Interpolates between A and B by T. So what are we trying to <clears throat> interpolate to? I guess we're going to need a previous distance. Oh, we have a previous distance here. Let's just make that a member variable. And this is in zooming. Actually, distance is in zooming as well. Oh, <laughs> private. The first two letters were correct. Everything after that was wrong. <laughs> Sometimes talking and coding is a little bit tricky. So let's see. Got our previous distance. We are setting it whenever we move the mouse. We're doing the distance, scroll wheel tick distance. We're clamping it. If the distances are equal, we're going to say zoom, easer, begin, ease. And I guess we're just going to lerp from previous distance to distance, right? Uh, you know what, maybe we're going to need a target distance as well. Yeah, that seems good. Because distance is what we're going to use in all of our other calculations. Let's just do this. Previous instance equals target distance equals distance. And then we'll make sure to clamp our target distance. And if they're not the same, I think we shouldn't calculate this here. We should calculate this inside of our easer. <clears throat> And then, of course, we have our zoom easer on end. Uh, this is going to be two lines of code. Uh, 
There we go. <clears throat> oh, semicolon to end our lambda. So we'll have our zoom lambdas, our rotator lambdas, and our translate lambdas. I think we can get rid of this. Cool. Hmm. All that's left is to test. So we're going to test just the rotation or the easing first. That's not working at all. The distance is not changing. Let's serialize our target distance and see what's happening there. Hmm. Well, it starts off with our target distance being zero. Five, four, three. So each click of my mouse, this is going up. So it looks like we are calculating the distance. I guess we need to set the transform of the camera. And so this is the camera target position plus the camera offset direction. <clears throat> hmm. Whoa. So that's a half second. What if it's point 0.1? So it seems to be target distance is changing, but distance isn't actually lerping, which I find quite Right, these are two floats, right? Okay. Oh, hey, oh, target distance. Okay, our zoom is working. Oh, and that's interesting. Our distance isn't locked to an exact an exact integer value anymore because we can like scroll twice and if we scroll halfway through a lerp, it's going to recalculate from that previous lerp. I think that's totally fine. Oh man. Okay, so bump, uh, let's see, start, boom, do. Yeah! Oh my goodness, that is just beautiful. Mm. Let's make the rotate around a little bit snappier. Nice. 
cool. So we solved that pretty quickly. How much time did that take? 10 minutes. Ugh. I love it when something just comes together like that. <clears throat> so it's look, it looks like we've eased our zoom correctly. Our easing is pretty good right now. I'm happy with its current state. So I do believe last time I mentioned the idea of the camera's current Yeah, the camera position modifying the way that we spin stuff. <clears throat> so let's investigate that for a little bit. And that's what we'll do with the rest of today. That is in the cube controller, I believe. And so here we're just rotating along vector right and vector forward. So let's see, we have our camera offset transform. So if this is where my camera is, and I click on this object and I want to rotate it to the right, I want it to spin up this way. So I'd like to be able to build that from this camera offset transform. Now there is a bit of a problem here. Oh, you know what? I do believe that this camera offset transform stays. So like, as soon as I rotate, oh no, it's not immediate. Okay. So there is a bit of a problem there where if the camera is rotating, how are we going to handle that? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, how do we handle that? So we've got two events. We have like a begin camera rotate and an end camera rotate. <clears throat> And I do believe that maybe once the camera stops rotating, it's at that point that the input changes. Okay, this is pretty crazy. <clears throat> so we've got this vector and we've got this vector, right? And so I do believe that if I add the forward and the right vector together of this camera offset transform and average them, I should get this direction. And then I can normalize it. Well, I think averaging normalized vectors will result in a normalized vector. No, it will not. It will not. So we will have to normalize that. Um, but that would be our left key. And then we can negate left to get right. And if we have right, then we can cross it with up and then figure out which way that goes. OK, so. I do believe that that means our camera controller is going to need to talk to our cube controller. Um, let's see, so I'll give this a header. Translating. And we can change this to rotating. And then we can move these up into here. I can get rid of this serialized field. And things are starting to look pretty good. 
we're still going to need a cube controller. I do believe that this is not on every cube. Good, good. It's in the core level objects. That's what I like to see. So our camera now needs a cube controller. Boom. Neato burrito. I'm going to change this back to 0.5. I like that. Okay, so. Ah, oh, you know what? We don't have to do any of that craziness. Camera offset transform. Let's create an empty game object. And we will call this cube rotate direction transform. Oh, shoot. And you know what? Let's just apply the same rotations to this that our um what's it called that this one gets, right? We could do this with one game object, but I like having a separate one just for this purpose exactly. So who needs to know about this? Our cube controller needs to know about this. I'll call this rotate direction transform and our camera controller needs to know about it as well. Did I call it cube rotation transform? Cube, no. Rotate direction transform. So that means our camera needs to know about this because it will modify it. And then our controller needs to know about it because it will use it. And you know what? I can pull these into the core level objects. These are going to need to be in every level. Nice. Cool. <clears throat> Scrape particles. Um, we'll ignore those for now. So let's see. Cube rotation direction transform. Let's just try setting this up. So instead of vector three dot right, we're going to say cube rotation transform rotation rotate direction transform <laughs> dot forward because we want it to go this way or right. forward and then this D oh shoot oh well let's just see what happens <laughs> so I'll start with W 
That's correct. D, backwards. S, correct. And A is backwards too. Okay, nice and easy. D and A are backwards. Cool. Good, back to normal. Let's see if I spin this. Still not using the camera, which is correct. We haven't set that up yet. Let's do that. In the camera controller, rotate and ease. This is where the magic will happen. Uh, that end rotation is a full quaternion. That's not quite what we want. We're probably going to want to store... This will be the... Wait a minute. End rotation. So I have the starting rotation, which is this, and then I apply some rotation when we create or when we press the button. So we rotate it around up by this many degrees. I want to do the exact same thing Yeah, let's store this in a quaternion. And this is the new cube rotate direction. <laughs> new cube rotate rotation. Naming things. New cube rotate rotation equals cube rotate direction transform rotation. New cube rotation rotation dot rotate boy this is getting a little bit silly what don't you like about that quaternion does not oh it's a transform itself isn't it Okay, so I think we're going to have to do the rotate, rotate back. Let's make a comment here, store target cube rotator rotation. And we are going to have to do this twice, so let's write it once and then we'll extract it into its own function. New cube rotate rotation equals crdt dot rotation. crdt. And then we'll rotate it backwards. So this is our new cube rotation. Let's pull this into its own function. Calculate new cube rotate rotation.
Oops, okay. So now we're calculating it here. We're calculate, store, restore it to its original so that while the camera is spinning, the old rotation data is still there. And then once the rotation is done, so in this on and ease lambda, no, this is cube rotate direction transform equals new. Let's see. Working. Spin. Oh, man. That. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? When we rotated back, the transform reset itself. <clears throat> That's not good. Is there something in the rotate? Relative to axis angle, do we have an axis angle space? We do. And I'm afraid this might be how quaternions work under the hood. We might have to do our own work here. Which I wouldn't be too disappointed about. Let's see, so spin, done, spin back. Dang it! Yeah, you can see here the rotation... Let's see. Yeah, it went from 180, and then we spun back. Oh, now it's at 90. Zero. Yeah, that negative 90 is not great. We could... Clamp this. Oh. Well, it's always either forwards or backwards. Now it's always backwards. Forwards, this is working backwards. Well, that does work. Um, if I'm always hitting the same key, and once it's done rotating... Oh boy, that's worrying. 72 of these bad boys? Hmm... Hmm. So we can't rely on, well, let's try space local. I doubt that's going to change anything. Oh, self, sorry. I really doubt it will change anything. 
But it's worth trying before we do something more drastic. That's correct. Broken. Okay. I think instead of rotating this transform, I think we're going to have to build our own transform one step at a time. Which was my original plan. Camera offset transform. Because with these two, we'll always know the average direction, which is pointing to the left. And that's where the left key should move it. Calculate new cube, rotate rotation. So we've got a relative left, and hmm, I want to, like I said, we have our camera offset transform, and we're going to take its forward plus its right and divide that by two. And let's do a debug draw line. And we'll draw it from the target position to the relative left normalized times three color dot blue, 100 seconds. Yeah. So let's see, if I spin, interesting, so it calculated there, which is wrong. We want it to calculate at the end once it is done. Okay, let's go here, spinny. Okay, that's right, it came out of the correct spot. Going back. It's hard to tell once it's already there. Let's move this down to one second. <clears throat> yeah, this looks right. Oh, and I can test it to the right. This one. Yes, cool. So that seems to be working just fine. Where does this get called? On end. And when we get key down, we don't want this anymore. So we have this vector now.
And this should be, what should this be? I guess we could make this one its forward. No, that we should make this one its right. Right, left and right. <laughs> okay, so we've re we've normalized it. New cube rotation dot rotation. Oh, you know what? We could just do cube rotate direction transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation, and we give it a forward. Can we give it a right? No, we need to give it a forward. We know what the upwards is. The upwards is its current up. So I'll do a comma here. U rotation direction. Oh, wait, um, I think this would be the camera offset transform dot up. And we can do a vector three cross here. I really didn't want to, but that should be fine. Relative left. And Camera offset transform up. Ooh, buddy. So let's let's pull that out. Vector three relative forward equals. Oh boy. Let's see how this behaves. We've got our cube rotate direction transform. And if I spin it to the right, forward should be facing this way. Oh, back. Oh, no. Well, that worries the heck out of me. Nothing. Hmm. <laughs> Let's just try it with relative left. This is getting called when we end, correct? Yes. Oh, hey, oh, poop. <laughs> Do work and then immediately delete the work you've done. Backwards. Well, I did change this to relative left. Let's go back to relative forward. I do believe that my cross product might also be out of order as well. No, not quite. Oh no. Well, at least it's only going, it's rotating in 90 degrees around that thing. Okay, so it's almost working. The first time, oh, this starts off with a 90 degree rotation.
Maybe we can apply it? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Backwards. Nothing. Really wrong. Full swap. Okay, that is not what we want. This seems really hacky. Cube, rotate, direction, transform, rotate. Eh? <laughs> Just add the 90 on? I don't know. Backwards. That was a swap back. Not what we want. Now it seems to be working. So it works up until the first, oh. Yeah, that seems right. I'm watching this blue arrow to make sure that it's pointing the right way. Um, let's try this. So instead of doing a times equal, we're multiplying the quaternions backwards. Still doubt that's going to do it. Right, wrong way, same. Yeah, very wrong. Okay. Let's try swapping the cross product. Absolutely back. But only after that first one. Hmm. Yeah, let's just start it at zero. We'll let the camera decide on a wake. Then we don't have any goofiness. And this should be calculate cube. Rotate direction transform. We want to Okay. Let's give that a shot. Now this thing should change to 90. It didn't. Shouldn't have deleted it, right? <laughs> Plus relative left times three color dot white two point five seconds. And then maybe a cyan, always a good color.
Okay, so this spin is working just fine. It's just the default value that's wrong. Let's change our cross product again. See what happens there. So that is still wrong. Or is it? You know. Yeah. Let's not get caught too caught up. Let's just change right and forward here. <laughs> right is backwards. Up and down is correct. Same as last time. That is really, really bizarre. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. Right. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> I negated the wrong one. I knew something was goofy there. So even though this says right, we're actually rotating along the right axis. We're not actually spinning it to the right. And I got good feelings about this one. Correct, correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That feels good, man. I'm not sure if I should do it once the camera starts spinning. That might be better. Do it when the camera begins. Just because I don't like the direction changing as you're pressing the same key. That seems very unintuitive to me. So let's just put this in our rotator, rotate easer on begin ease, no arguments, one line of code, and it is as the new line in there. Okay. How about now? Oh, oh forgot a semicolon at the end of our lambda. Easy mistake to make. Especially when you come from a C language background, it's so bizarre to have a semicolon after a body, right? Super weird. Yeah, that's much better. Cool. Excellent. Well, I think that is it for today. Let's see how we did on time. Not bad. So, let's see. As a quick recap, what have we done? We fixed our zooming. 
So now we can zoom and rotate and translate all at the same time. Oh, that's really hard to do. Oh. Yeah, that is awesome. And we also allowed our cubes to rotate the right way based on the current camera position. I think in the next episode, I'm going to tackle the terrifying world flip. We're going to see how that goes. So our camera is going to get quite... Well, let's see where it is now. You know, it's less than 200 lines of code. It's not that beefy. It's complex, it's doing a lot of math, but honestly, we've got a lot of really cool behaviors in here for just 200 lines of code. But I think that's it for me today. I hope all of you enjoyed and learned a little bit. Good luck on your projects, and I'll see you tomorrow.